you could be in danger right where you are in this very moment. There is danger to you in the water that you drink, the food that you eat, and even the clothes that you wear. Every time you take a sip of water or a bite of food, there's a chance that you're consuming an invisible danger that we have sent into the world by manufacturing so many products with a silent hazard, plastic. You might think that the plastic in your trash goes away after the garbage truck picks it up, but this is not the case. The United Nations Program for the Environment reported that each year, over 350 million tons of plastic waste is produced globally. Of all this waste, only 9% is recycled. The other 91% is sent to landfills, where it breaks down into tiny particles called microplastics that we can't see, but they never go away. From the landfill, microplastics are washed into our soil and waterways, meshed into our food sources, and then led right into our bodies. But we can't see them, so how are we gonna get rid of these things? This is possible if we begin to see the plastic that we use in the impact that it is making. We've all heard that plastic is a problem at some point in our lives, but so many of us have listened and failed to act. Way before I recognized the problem that has been created, I had read the social media posts about plastic, I had heard about all the waste we dump everywhere, and I had seen plastic bottles and wrappers in the sand at the beach plenty of times before. But I always assumed, the world is so big, how could something so small, like a wrapper or a plastic bottle, cause such a large problem? It wasn't until the first time I truly saw microplastics that I decided to take my chance at reducing plastic pollution. This was during my freshman year in college when I was assigned a research project on investigating the amount of microplastics ingested by local oysters. My partner and I began research, we dissolved some oysters, filtered all microparticles out of the substance, and then placed the samples under a UV microscope that would cause any plastic particles to glow. I peered down into that microscope to look at the first sample, and in front of me, all I saw was a sea of microplastics. The plastic wrappers in bottles that I thought to be a small problem seemed like a much bigger deal when they made up a large portion of an oyster, a creature that was living. And these microplastics that I observed in the oysters doesn't just sit in their digestive systems. It reduces fertility and stunts development until the oysters die or get eaten. And can I get a show of hands? How many people here like eating lobster? Lobster bisque? Lobster ravioli? What about lobster with plastic? This could be a new flavor, because lobsters like eating oysters, microplastics and all. These tiny particles have infiltrated the ocean food chain like a virus, spreading their negative health effects each time another organism is consumed. Seafood is my favorite food group, but at the top of the ocean food chain are humans. When you're served your lobster bisque or seafood platter, it's served to you with a complimentary side of plastic something that has become a staple in our diets. We're not only eating plastic through seafood and water. Whenever food is heated up in plastic, those tiny microplastic particles are melting into what we eat. But we never seem to notice this, so why should we get rid of it? Microplastics have spread across the earth like a spilled bottle of glitter. We can never seem to clean them all up, and they keep showing up in the most unexpected places. 
The National Institute of Health reported that when our own bodies were investigated for microplastics, they were found in human blood, organs, and even the placentas of some women. It's currently unknown how these discoveries will affect us. Before we find out, we have the chance to make a change. Let's not allow the harm that has spread through the ocean ecosystems to spread into our own. Everything seems to contain plastic, so it's so often that we use plastic negatively without even realizing it. Many of us are probably covered in the most common source of microplastics, right now, unaware. If your clothing tag is labeled polyester, you could be one of these people. Polyester is made of plastic, and when it goes in the laundry, those, that plastic degrades, releasing microplastics into the wastewater that is then drained into the waterways we rely on. We have the chance to mitigate this issue by shopping for more sustainable clothing fabrics like wool, cotton, hemp, linen, or silk. But these materials are harder to find. I certainly don't own a wardrobe of linen and silk. It's mainly polyester because that's what's accessible. When we wear polyester, we can still limit the amount of microplastics produced by our clothes while preventing them from shrinking and saving on the electricity bill by washing our laundry on cold cycles and hanging it up to dry. This prevents that plastic material from degrading so less microplastics are being released. Changing laundry patterns may be less convenient, but plastic is an item of convenience. It is easy to grab a plastic bottle from a vending machine, it is easy to carry groceries into the house with plastic bags, and it is easy to unwrap a snack and throw the plastic wrapper in the nearest trash can. To solve the microplastic problem, we need to get rid of some of this convenience. This is your chance. We need to begin seeing the microplastics that we create before they're created. This means preventing plastic from entering the landfill so it never has the chance to break down. When you think about throwing out a single-use plastic after that one use, think about if that convenience would be worth eating it for dinner. If you wouldn't eat it for dinner, try thinking of a way to reuse that item or eliminate it from your consumption patterns. Start taking a plastic inventory throughout your days. When you dispose of an item that contains plastic, make a tally, put it in your notes app, or just make a mental note of it. By noticing the plastic that you use every day, you are given the chance to limit your use of unnecessary plastic. In some cases, plastic is necessary, but we cannot continue to use it irresponsibly. At first glance, it seems impossible to limit all the plastic we use because it seems like a mandatory thing for so many processes, but this does not have to be the case. Man-made particles should not be found in oysters, humans, or any living thing. The more we see the microplastics we produce during our lives and stop ignoring the problem, the less dangers there will be lurking. People have the chance to limit their plastic use and make a change. For things to get better instead of worse, we all need to take that chance.